Hello, thank you for joining Matthews Digital. My name is Aaron, and today we are going to discuss Temenos connectors. We are going to see how to configure both TC server and TC client. Now, this is a request from one of our friends from Nepal. On my screen, I have a TC monitor opened. A TC monitor is a tool which is used to monitor all the activities of a TC server. So on a TC monitor, you can see how many adapters you have. You can monitor the request for adapters. And you can also see the listeners and their status. As you can see here, I have two adapters, test adapter and T24 adapter. And I also have four listeners. There are two listeners linked to this uh, T24 adapter. And I have two listeners linked to the adapter test. Three of these listeners are of type TCP and I have one of raw TCP. And these are the port numbers. So if I want to connect to any of these listeners, I use these ports. And here I can see all the activities, what is happening on my TC server. So here I have the number of sessions, for now there's zero. But if I perform any activity on T24, I get a connection opened. So let me do this. You can see the number of transactions increases each time. I click somehow on T24 or I perform an activity on T24. But so far I have two connections and I've processed 89 transactions. The number of requests received from client and I have average response time. So on average, uh, this, this server is responding in 263 milliseconds. Now, let me show you how to configure this. We start with the TC server. So we just seen the monitor port. If you look at here, this is the port I'm connected to. I have also a Telnet port. So if you don't have this TC monitor, you can still monitor your TC server using Telnet. So let me connect to, to this port, the Telnet port, okay? Great, as you can see, uh, here it says TC server, Telnet, Diamond, and the time, the number of session for now is zero. But if I do something on T24, let's see. All right, you see? Okay, good. So whenever there's an activity, it gets triggered. Good. Now, you can also see the list of listeners for, as you can see, we have browser one. The same information I have here, listener list. Look, compare them. See, we have browser two, TCP, the port, the adapter, and it is active. Okay, so the same information. Okay, so if you don't have this tool, you can still monitor your TC server using Telnet. So let me disconnect. So these are the two main ports probably you need to use to monitor your TC server. Now, the main sections you will deal with when configuring TC server are these two, the adapters and the listeners. But of course, you might have uh, the formatters. Formatters are used to transform the request and the response. You can define your formatters here. So if you are using OFS, there's no need of formatters, okay? Now, the adapters. For the adapters, you need to define the ID. This should be unique. 
And for each adapter, you need to define the maximum number of sessions. If you have many clients using this adapter, you need to increase this number of sessions. Minimum is one. So timeout, this timeout is how many seconds uh, this adapter will wait T24 to process transaction before it times out. Okay, so you need to know the connection between your TC server and a T24, how long will it take to process. 30 seconds is more than enough. As you can see here, on average, the request is being processed within 227 milliseconds. So 0 0.2 seconds. So it's less than a second. So 30 seconds here, I think it is enough for me. And then here we have uh, the path to T20 home, home directory. Okay. Normally this is the one which is defined in dot profile or remote.cmd if you're using Windows. So you get that path. And the path to JBS, the JBS home, where JBS is located. Here we have a program. You don't change this. Normally this is a TCS. TCS is a program which is developed by, by Temenos and is used to process our OFS. To give you an example, even if you don't have a, TC server, you can still process OFS. So you connect to T24 and you go to JSHA the same way I did. And you tap TCS space and you need to add a valid OFS source. I have OFS source which is called uh, BAL OFS. Hit enter. And this is what you can you should see. Uh, the version could be different. And from here, I can send my OFS string. I have some test OFS strings. Let me grab the, this and I can paste them here. Boom, as you can see, for each request I sent, I got a response. Look, here I'm getting a customer list. For this customer, I get a response. I send for balance inquiry, I get the balance, okay? So uh, if you type uh, invalid uh, OFS, like hello, you get invalid sign on name. You can still process uh, OFS without TC server. But of course this is not practical, so that's why we need to have a TC server now so this will perform exactly the same steps so it connects to t24 it invokes this uh, application tcs giving the parameter your ofs source the same way you did it here and sends your request gets a response and sends back the response to you so this is ofs and this is also OFS. A request is OFS and the response is OFS. If you type anything which is not OFS, you get a such response. Good. So we have here two adapters. One is T24 and the other one is test. You may also have uh, special environment variables for an adapter. In most of cases, you don't need this unless you are running multiple environments on one server. Even that, you can still specify for each environment of the home for T24. They will be different. Okay. So in most of cases, this is sufficient. Now, let's move to listeners. Now, for each adapter, you need to define listeners. If you want the clients to connect to your TC server, then you need to have uh, the listeners. 
for this T24 adapter, I have defined two listeners. So my web browser is going to channel either to browser one or browser two. So if I have a load balancer, whenever I get connected, it will connect either to this port or to this port. All these ports, they use the same adapter. Meaning, if a client connects to this port, they will use the adapter T24. And if they connect to this port, 10,003, they connect to test adapter, okay? If they connect to this port, they connect to test as well. Now, what is the difference between a listener and an adapter? A listener is used by a client. They have different types. So for now, we have, we have two types. But you could also have type like MQ. So if you're using a queue manager, like MQ, you can have the type as MQ. Here I have two types. I have TCP and raw TCP. TCP is used for TC client. And raw TCP is normally used for testing purpose. Because you see both request and response in a clear mode. In brief, for you to have a TC server up and running, you need to have a valid OFS source and you need to define the listeners for each adapter. And on the listener, you define the port. Now let's see a TC client. The TC client, as the name suggests, it's a client to a TC server. So, for a client to connect to TC server, you need to have the port and the type valid, as well as the host name or host IP. So, in this case, we are saying uh, we have channel 1. We give it a name. It's a browser.1. The type of adapter we are using for this channel is TCP and the port is 10001. So the client, which is our browser, is going to connect to this port using TCP. And since I'm running uh, my browser on the same server as T24, so the host name I can specify as localhost so it can be localhost or the ip so I have two channels corresponding to my two listeners and I have also one channel for my interfaces which uses tcp so thank you i hope you have enjoyed watching this video and you find it very informative you now know how to configure a TC server and a TC client. You also know how to monitor uh, your TC server using a TC monitor or using a telnet. So please subscribe if you haven't. Share and like this video. In our next video, we are going to continue our discussion on T24 subroutines. So we discuss the last two types of subroutines which are related to inquiries before we conclude uh, our topic on subroutines. Thank you. See you next. Bye-bye.